dear friends, in my little musings this morning, um, I wish to uh, to talk about something <laughs> about the unsung heroes and heroines. I think there is a problem in the world when it comes to recognizing true heroes and heroines. This world is really a, f a failed destination. It's a fallen place. And that is why when we talk about the fall from the Garden of Eden eastward to the, this earthly um, ab abode, it is a total uh, an exodus from completely perfect to totally imperfect. The world is not perfect at all. And, and that is why a lot of the glamour we hear, a lot of the stories we hear are making rounds are actually culpable. They, they are not necessarily true. And things that are really true in this world don't go very far. I don't know how it is, but I think it is because of that fallen state, that fallen nature of the world. And in this world, the standards that are used to determine uh, its heroes and heroines are also, you know, uh, completely out of place. And I say this because we hear about heroes. And if we really know who these people are, I don't mean they should be perfect. But you realize that some of the heroes we have are actually not heroes at all. They have done nothing. To warrant that singing, that accreditation through media and all that. I personally know people in, in Kenya who have done absolutely nothing um, that warrants them to be heroes and yet they have been given a lot of um, unnecessary uh, accreditation, unnecessary approval and uh, it's really interesting. So I have been thinking about the heroes and heroines. And we have some unsung heroes. I'm blessed to know some of these people. Because I work with the unknowns. With the little ones. And one of them that I want to appreciate this morning. And I'll be doing this quite oftenly. We'll be picking people who have done things in the quietness of their time, so silently, but things that impacted upon lives. And we will I will talk about these people. Not so that uh, they can they can achieve anything, but uh, so that uh, really we can just recognize them. Because God has given me a heart of worship. A heart that seeks to recognize good. And I try to find good in, in, in the bad. I, I try to wring out, to squeeze out some juices. Out of you know situations that are naturally not very juicy. And uh, through my work have really managed to get the good out of bad and I've managed to um, encourage people who had given up, who thought they are so bad and who believed their report and it worked against them and God helped me to show them that they are not bad that it, they are not being punished by God that uh, they are not hated they're not ugly. They're actually beautiful. They're fearfully and wonderfully made. 
and God knows why what happened had to happen in the time it had to happen and I have been privileged to see people rising up and that is why we are called rise up movement rise up society because we believe in in raising up things that are fallen coming up from our fallen state and and and, and showing on and and acting in faith and in, in obedience to what God is telling us so <laughs> it's already five minutes into this video I'm going to be talking about Irene Anderson. Irene Anderson is a lady from the UK. She's a precious woman. I don't know much about her, her life. But I know about her acts, her symbol, acts of kindness. Irene has been in the shadows. She has been in the background through the years from the time we registered our little movement of Rise Up, she somehow bumped into my videos. And she is a bit erratic. Uh, when you listen to her communication, you will mistake her. Because she makes these short statements that are sharp. Mm, and uh, she will make several comments. But Irene Anderson is one of those unsung heroines. I got to understand more about her as I walked and walked through the villages in Western Kenya. She has this um, ability to identify some people independently and to work with them. And about, you know, more than 10 times I have met people whom I actually didn't know existed. But she had identified these people and she had worked with them to do things in villages. And one of these guys is in Bunyore. You know, I, I, I work in Vihiga County and you know, I work in five counties in, in the western region. But one of the striking examples are about a guy uh, called, uh, I think, Isaiah from Bunyore, from Kima. And this old man was rejected by his own. And he lost hope in life. He had absolutely zero, nothing. And then we arrived there later on doing follow-ups and we find things working for him. And we are told he got some sponsor to help with the housing and, and stuff. And then we got this teacher who was helping there. We met this guy who is a teacher who happens to be a teacher there. And he told us um, a lady called Irene Anderson send money in. We did this. And I was moved beyond words. Because I knew Irene. And uh, she was a friend on Facebook and she always supported me. But she was going overboard and reaching out to African villages quietly. I was so moved by that, and I want to mention it. Then, sorry, I can't see my little screen. And I know Irene has written numerous protest letters to the UK government. She has written to the Jimmy Carter Foundation, she has written to Obama, she has written to the Queen of England, she comes from the UK, she has written to the Birmingham Palace, she has contacted uh, UK Aid, she has written to Oxfam, she has contacted um, Safaricom in Kenya, and, and media companies, she has done all she could to try and raise support for people. And you know what? We have these people who will 
you know, come up because the conditions are favorable at a given time. And you will hear them so passionately pursuing something. And you will see them like on top of things and trying so hard to do stuff. But it only lasts like a week or two. And they will go back and chicken out. And they will be quiet again. And when you will try to follow up on them and hear anything about what they were so passionately about, you will not hear much. Because they are so fickle. We are so fickle. Especially we Christians. But Irene has fought for many years. She has met these protests for years. From the time she knew Rise Up, from the time I have known her, she has always made protests. And they have never responded to her favorably. But they have had her voice. And I have a message for Irene. Irene, I want you to listen to me, darling. I want you to know that I recognize the work you have done. I want you to know that being someone who works in the field with people who are nobodies, having been a nobody myself, I can identify with you. And I want you to I want to tell you this morning that your efforts are not in vain. Somebody can pretend they did not hear. They could look upon your language and maybe you don't have those vocabularies and deep language. It might not be very professional. But I want to assure you that your voice has been heard. You may not see the fruits of your labors of love right now. But I can assure you, my dear sister, that the fruits of your labors are there. And your protests are not in vain. I want you to know, Irene, that if nobody else recognizes your effort, I truly do. So sincerely, I recognize your work. And I want to encourage you and to tell you that it's not in vain. Keep on fighting. Irene, I know you're not a Christian. You're not a believer like me and a lot of the supporters that we have. And you don't invoke Christ in what you do. And I want to <laughs> preach to you a bit. Allow me to do that. And to tell you that, uh, Irene, it costs you nothing to believe in Jesus. He is true. And Irene, it's better to live as if there is a God only to reach in heaven and find none, or to die and find none, than to live without belief and later on find that there was a God and you missed the mark. I have looked at your works and my heart welled with, with thanksgiving and I was thanking God for you. And now I'm challenging you to please join us in belief. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to do anything. You just have to believe. To believe that there is a God in heaven. To believe that the passion you have in your heart to do whatever you do it's not personal. It comes from God. All the goodness we can do in our own efforts will take us nowhere. But when we do it in the name of God, there is a reward waiting for us. You are so much better than so many Christians I know. When a lot of Christians judged me and wished that evil could befall me, you sent me a text message and you told me don't mind. Don't worry about them. Just keep on fighting. I have confidence in your work. Sometimes you're such a nuisance. You're not even my friend on Facebook. 
because when I allow you to be my friend on Facebook, you keep on loading stuff on my timelines. And it becomes a bit too much because you can put in a lot more in just one day. But I want to submit to you before the world, before my viewers, that I have a great admiration for you. I love you, Irene. And I want to encourage you in the name of the Lord as I welcome you on board to tell you that God loves you and so do I. And I want to use Irene's life to encourage somebody else. Irene is not a wealthy woman, but she is a blessing to others. And I believe from the bottom of my heart that God recognizes that. And she has her rewards. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we will harvest if we faint not. Keep doing it.